You've been a long time coverer, follower of the Greek situation. I, what, what light are we flashing at the moment in terms of how serious the situation is? Oh, well, I think it's a pretty bright orange. And I think, you know, I think it was very interesting you made the point about the fifth anniversary because how can a crisis possibly go on so long, five years? And I guess in essence it is the fact that Greek debts has never been made sustainable and by that I mean sustainable in the sense it's not just you can write a profile down on paper but you actually have the political support for it and they've yeah. never achieved that in Greece. Um, Gabriel, that and, and I guess the fact that we haven't really seen any reforms or any real tax collection, is, is that fair? Well, I, I think blame definitely lies on both sides. So I think the Greek implementation of the program has been patchy, yeah. uh, although the fiscal adjustment has been extraordinary. Uh, so, you know, you can be a glass half empty, glass half full person on that. But in, in essence, uh, the, the, the underlying problem, I think, is that the, I'll still call them the Troika, have always, they've been very reluctant to make Greece debt sustainable because that involves debt forgiveness. And the problem with debt forgiveness is that you take your hand off the throat of Greece, in a sense, and you worry about the momentum. But, um, you know, in a sense, you have to make it sustainable at some point because that's the only way you get political support. And you can kind of blame Syriza to a certain extent, but in a way, uh, you know, the Troika, if they didn't give birth to Syriza, they certainly fed the, the, the political sentiment in Greece that nurtured it and, and gave, it so much, gave Syriza so much popularity. So, in a sense, they have themselves to blame. What do you make of the volatility we see in Greek debt? Well, um, I mean, it's extraordinary, really, because if you talk to the holders, there is uh, still the hope of an upside. You know, so if you do get a program, if it does work, if you do get Portuguese yields, the price goes to 90, you know, 44, 45. You make a ton of money. And the other thing, you make a ton of money. Um, of course, if it doesn't work and Greece exits, you're probably down to 11, 12. And then there's short-term people, so a lot of people are very smart, they're not playing for that 90 or, or, or hopefully that 10, but they might just say, you know what, if Greece does get a prog, you get a new agreement, you get the ECB bang the bonds, that could see a really big pop in, and, and then I'll sell then. So there's all sorts of players, um, you know, it's not like a couple of years ago, they're, they're very smart players, very well informed in there. Uh, to me, they're taking too much risk, but, you know, everyone's got their own view. I mean, taking too much risk because you actually believe that with every passing day, there is more and more of a chance that Greece defaults and eventually leaves. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the way I approach it is you have, you have to attach probabilities to all these scenarios and you come up with a price. And uh, the, the probability of an exit is, um, I think, getting big enough to make the whole Greek government bond probably, you know, overpriced given the risk. I guess in that respect, it's not the only asset in the world that's uh, overpriced no. <laughs> given the risk. But I think the thing, the thing in Greece and probably Ukraine is once you stare into the whites of the eyes of default, you know, you see it right there in front of you and it seems a little bit more um, real that this risk is overpriced sometimes. Um, what, what chance would you assign then? Give us some probabilities. Well, I, I mean, the way I see it, I take not a short-term view, but maybe an 18-month view. Yeah. And I think, it's, to me, it's getting towards 40%. Of an exit. In, of an exit. In the sense that, A, um, I still think you'll probably get an agreement, uh, but you could easily not. Uh, and I'm, I'm pessimistic that if you do go into capital controls uh, without an agreement, it becomes, ex well, capital controls without an agreement, without a clear plan, without a credible plan like you had in Cyprus, yeah. it's going to be very difficult to get out of them. I mean, capital controls in the sense of banks getting closed, yeah. ELA w frozen. And the other is, if you do get agreement, I'm still fairly pessimistic because um, there isn't a political constituency in Greece to implement it and to do the reform. So even if you get... So this isn't Cyprus? It's not Cyprus. Cyprus had a very... It was very painful, huge opposition to capital controls. On the other hand, uh, Cyprus, at the point they implemented capital controls, had a program. They just got rid of a kind of very extreme communist so-called communist government, there was huge consensus of the centre-right. They wanted more austerity than the Troika, in a way, wanted more structural reforms. So actually implementing the programme in many ways was extraordinarily s smooth. It was credible within m weeks, months. In Greece, it's nothing like that, nothing like that. So capital controls in Cyprus lasted two years. In Greece, they, they could last a short time with an exit, or if, even the good scenario, they, they'll last probably double that at least.